retain uh, is a phase two trial uh, for patients with muscle invasive bladder cancer, clinically T2 to T3. And the whole point, the whole idea is to see if some of them can be spared a cystectomy or local aggressive treatment such as chemo radiation to their bladder. So the standard of care for muscle invasive bladder cancer is neoadjuvant chemotherapy followed by cystectomy or chemo radiation. Uh, we know that some patients at the time of their cystectomy, after they've had chemotherapy, will have no more disease. There will be what we call YPT0. And the question then comes up, can those patients be spared a cystectomy? Um, a cystectomy is a huge quality of life detriment, uh, and um, any patient would like to avoid it if possible, but obviously the oncologic outcomes have to be preserved. Uh, and so the question is, is there a way ahead of time to be able to select appropriately patients who can avoid the surgery or can avoid chemo radiation? Uh, and so what we did is we selected these patients by giving them neoadjuvant chemotherapy sequencing their pre-chemotherapy tumors and look for certain mutations, one of four, that have previously been shown to correlate with excellent oncologic outcomes and correlate with really good response to chemotherapy. And those happen to be RCC2, FINK, um, RB1, um, and um, ATM. And if they had one of those four mutations, we then looked again in their bladder after their chemotherapy. And if they had no disease and there were no disease on imaging, they were allowed to go on to active surveillance. The rest of the patients were treated as standard of care as you would normally. And uh, these results that we presented uh, was for all of the 71 patients on trial. And in particular, focusing on the subset, the 26 patients who went on to active surveillance, what we showed is that uh, there are two sort of important key findings. One is um, a good proportion of them, actually over 50%, did end up having a recurrence of their disease. However, the vast majority, the recurrence was non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, and they have been able to be treated with intravesical therapy for most of them and still have been able to be spared a cystectomy. Their overall survival is excellent at this point with a median follow-up of approximately 20 months. Um, there have been two deaths, uh, but as we pointed out uh, during the presentation, uh, deaths are bound, unfortunately, to occur no matter what in this population. And the question is, uh, is if you can sort of keep that uh, percentage as you would expect for the overall group for patients with muscle invasive bladder cancer, and yet still preserve bladder in a proportion of them, does that make sense? Is that a quality of life win, so to speak? And we, we believe that it is. Um, and so the primary endpoint is two-year metastasis-free survival, which we're comparing to sort of our baseline, our historical controls. Uh, that has not been reached yet for all patients. So that's why these are the interim results. Um, but so far, uh, it, it seems certainly intriguing. There are two other trials that are attempting very similar uh, approaches, uh, an Alliance trial and the Hoosier trial. Those are ongoing, and uh, we need to see what those results are. We need to see what our final results are, and then we can put all of this together and figure out what are the really right biomarkers to move forward in this type of a paradigm where we're, again, trying to spare uh, patients a cystectomy. I would also point out that at this point, certainly this is not a standard of care. This should only be done on clinical trial. Uh, and um, those were the key findings.